So we're here on the pistol rounds. And uh, we'll see. We're starting on the defensive side for Astralis. So this will be a real test. Nice to see this half first. Let's get it on. Backs against the wall, Ninjas. Nice call out. Oof, good push into short side. Config and Blame, good for one. And then Config doubles it up. So it's only the monster play coming in from Ninjas that's left over on this T side pistol. And Device gets tapped away by Lucky. Just clean execution from start to finish for the most part. S Attack will be able to escape with Bomb mm. and his life. But for how long does he hold on to both those items? Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Um... Well, I mean, you know, if he can find a way to score a bomb plant, that's how you win. That's the win right there. Ooh, look at that Glock. That's not bad. Yeah, full emerald Glock with foil and tropic stickers. Holy yeah. moly. Yeah. You've got one of these. That's pretty good, yeah. I watched you unbox it. I gave it away, though. I gave it away. Yeah. Uh, you said, does anybody said want it? And I messaged you within two minutes and yeah. said, dude, I would love that. Yes. And uh, where's my Glock, Launders? Not you. No, I didn't give it away to you. I know. Yeah. That's my point. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna have to buy one from the Steam Market, I think. This is a bomb plant. Oh, he gets a bomb plant. No way he just walked up wow. and got a bomb plant. Wow, he did. Just mosey onto the site and get a bomb plant. Sure. All right. We'll give it to him. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt as well because, ooh, settle down now. Oh, my goodness. Glaive in the 1v1 was locked in for that, but uh, he takes it. And that's Astralis. Yeah, sure enough, giving away a bomb plant. The first bomb plant of this entire series. Wow. I almost understood it because it sounded so right. I know Max is in production right now, just losing his mind. Yeah. He's cross-eyed right now. Feel Fortnite. <laughs> Pistols up for ninjas in pajamas, Great double AK. Game. You believe in the double AK on overpass? Yes. Me too. So once you can close this gap towards this A site, if the pistols can get anywhere close to the opponents, then suddenly those rifles in the back serve as a great support. But, oof, nice couple of shots from Glaive. Blame pops up from Connector and uh, executes poor Plopsky. Never had a damn chance. That's one of the AKs already down and the other one firing off towards Long. I'm sure they won't overface it. This is going to have to be some kind of a burst, either through connector down to B, or just headstrong into the A site, because currently Astralis, they've got the ninjas corralled. I really wonder if NIP, because of what we saw in Noob, will try to like lean this game plan more heavily towards A to put some pressure on the offers to, to deliver, because obviously the off is instrumental on this map, particularly on A. And from what we saw from the last map, surely the Vice is going to be the best off on the server right now. But uh, Glaive is a very good scout. He always has been, even though the yeah. offing is kind of new. He's definitely picked up the scout a ton in his career. Yeah, he's good with it. Zipix also playing from long, so they know that everybody here for the ninjas has got to be coming into the A site, and Config going to cut them down. One, two, and okay, three. Okay, all right, yeah, that's that's a Config man maneuver right there. No one else does it like that. It's all It all gets very, you know, complicated when you play at this level, but uh, of the two things, the thing is you can continuously fall back, but if you don't get compensation as you're falling back, then your team's going to be continuously losing position. The rotations are going to be st stressed really heavily. So there will be, you know, an onus on Glaive to get something out of these spots. Um, and he can't just have a mediocre game. Great Particularly damage. with the op. I mean, yep. yeah, he was good outside the op. It's just that. I feel like all of that, right? All of that point, especially is emphasized on overpass and the role that he's playing as the bathroom's forward player. Like, yeah, you, you got to be Let's you got to be able to step up to it. It's right. curious to me that he's continuing to play the scope. I yes. thought, you know, maybe it would be certain positions on nuke. This yep. is a new team. So maybe it's like a placeholder type ideology. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to do this for now while we all settle in. But uh, already some consistency here for the new version of Astralis. M41S will be picked up and placed alongside the AK of Rez. Okay. Oh my, Glaive Yo. is just tearing them apart. Uh, boom, bop. And now instantly into the double op setup of Config and, and Glaive. Config does pick up the as a hybrid um, sometimes. And not as consistently as he already has done on, on Astralis so far, but yeah, yep. he is a hybrid. It's crazy to me that, you know, no, oh, hold on, they saw yeah, Blame I saw, F. I saw him, yeah. Yep, yep, he's going to get isolated here. Can he take anybody with him? Because they are coming at him in full force. Blame F, the first casualty, but it, it's wild when Glaive is opping over top of Lucky, and so is Config. Yeah, already crazy to see Blame playing, uh, you know, A, that aggressively in his position, but could have turned into a lurk simultaneously. Oof, I, like ships in the night. Whoa. My God, no reason. No way. Oh, man, they're going to be nuts to butts in a second. Device oh. and Glaive, it's like they're on the same team again. Oh, my God, but they're not. 
And oh, but they're not. Sure, surely Glaive's the one to make noise when he moves back, right? The vice is going to be but lurking. Essa tag with bomb. They are literally walking through the site right now. Essa tag with bomb trying to come in through party. He's going to get caught off. Oh, wait a second. But no, Glaive's not going to have any idea. They're no on the clue. site right. Oh, yeah, he just backs up into three players. But the has bomb. no clue. Oh, this is such a weird spot because it's going to leave monster. device. He's still pushed forward. And yeah, second player caught off guard. Make it a third. Zipix not able to react fast enough. So what a wonky situation. And yet, solid recovery from the ninjas in pajamas. Unlucky, really. Yeah. And that, that is something that uh, it's kind of hard to put your, your you know, put a, uh, exactly pin down why, you know, that can, like a moment like that can happen. But you will find, you know, that's going to happen less to somebody who's just more regularly opping on like a part of a map, right? Those kinds of timings are going to be less possible and just less likely. But, uh, Device also had no idea that Glaive was just right in front of him yep. on the inside of bathroom. So so close. Yes, it was a two-way street. Interesting spot. This one right here, Blame just had no idea he got spotted crossing, even though he went silent. And hey, even after Glaive goes down, Device is way farther ahead and wasn't even the guy to kill him as well. That shadow on the staircase, and then commits for the second. So. Very nice bit of uh, timing here, employed by the ninjas in pajamas to get themselves in. That was a strange one. You just kind of walked past that. Weird yeah. timing. Game goes on. Game goes on. But it was an expensive loss, right? Two ops. They can't instantly buy up into those ops again. So that'll be, have to, that'll be something that they'll have to forego for this next round, even if they do buy. And it is a, a very mixed buy. They, they do pick up an op on Glaive, configs all the way down to a Deagle. It's the amount of money spent. By no means ideal, and yet doable. We talk about the analyst of the ninjas in pajamas from time to time. Mahone! Mahone. Our boy. You know, uh, a friend of all YouTubers. I knew you'd get excited. One of the very best. <laughs> Absolutely. Wouldn't but, have wanted to do his job in preparation for this match. It was such a sh Oh my god. <laughs> what does he even do? I mean, maybe it's the easiest job ever. Just can't do anything, really. Yeah. We saw... Just list off everyone's stats. We saw the ninjas yesterday. We're like, yo, where's Mahone? They're like, back at the hotel. Analyzing. And I thought to myself instantly, like, analyzing what? Because <laughs> it's sure yeah. as hell not Astralis. Well, he was doing the back rubs for Rez. Ooh. That helps out. Wow. He dinked Plopsky through the wall and then also killed him. Wow. Config does what he wants. Poor guy. Poor guy. But yes, uh, Mahomes, fantastic YouTube channel. We were sad to lose him in the YouTube community. YouTube analysis, CSGO analysis community. When he left, went to NIP by the same time. It was an amazing opportunity and we're glad to see him. And I've heard from the NIP players that he's done an incredible job. Well, so, that's high praise. And, and they wouldn't lie in private, right? So. Lucky going to get burned out of this spot. Not a comfortable position for him, but tucked more so on the short side. Rez going to use this as an exit route. And, ooh, Lucky comes up short versus Hampus. Zipix trying to find damage through smoke. And Config just, oh, oh my god, making that deagle sing. Not to mention Blame F at a oh. distance. Glaive in with the op, and nobody's going to escape. It is a shutdown from Astralis on B. Oh, that's beast mode. You had this little trap card in the corner with Config looking up with his deagle. And even though the whole Magran drive from the other player who was in pit, they had no idea there'd be an extra man there. So even though he went down to the deagle, look at the damage and impact that he did. Config such an X factor. One of the most interesting riflers in the history of the game because of his potential peak. Still unbeaten in his kill regulation. He actually did it on overpass. 47 kills in regulation, I believe, versus Renegades. And that record was set years and years ago. Oh, Lucky gonna fall victim to device. His prying eyes through short side. Blame's got to extinguish the Molotov and run back up towards party for a duel. Hamp is going to give him that fight. And boy, Map's going to win it. Oh, he's so prepared. Straight jab to the teeth. Hamp is down for the count. Config challenging the connector door. That's going to activate Rez. He feels like he could find a bit of timing here. Glaive towards barrel spotted and just insta pop. <laughs> he saw that off. He freaked out. He's like, you're dead. You're not looking at me. Yeah, and it's like moments like that. You probably wouldn't see the vice get caught off. You know, in those positions. Oh, the vice spots Oof. a barrel. Warning shot. Yeah, the, the rotation back is actually going to be kind of difficult. They 
throws a flash. He, he does away. get out. Yeah, he had to do it in some kind of risky way, but he managed it. This is everybody coming at him, though. Ninjas. Uh, well, let's pay attention to support here from his rotating teammate, first and foremost. Config from Bank playing behind boxes. Maybe looking to draw attention. Good spray from Blame for one. Config's been set up. He drops bomb. Gets around into the cover. Oh, yeah, takes right. a second with him. And now Device locked in from the flower pots. Hits the first shot. Tap. tap. Oh, Good night. Brutal. Config's got the clutch. Damn, man. The way he plays it. It's so confident, but it looks like such a checkmate. Like, what are you supposed to do there? Literal signs. No, it's too late. Can't give people what they want all the time. Then they get their hopes up. <laughs> well, I'm a nice guy, so I'd have given it to him. I also didn't notice right away. Oh. But the next one, I'm going to make you read it. Nope. Yep. Mm, nope. One rifle this time around. Do you believe in the single rifle? Uh, not as much as I believe in the double, double rifle. rifle. Yeah, nothing quite like the double rifle. But uh, you know, playing pistols up close onto a site is is always something that, that can work out on a map like Overpass. Especially when you get setups like this on the double long, because the pistols can just play through bathrooms, and then the snap of a finger, they are in your bomb site within the range of lethality, which Hampus currently is not. Pinned down behind the old oak. Scouring the bathrooms, clearing out short bath, coming around to long, putting some pressure on the A setup to get everyone back behind dice. That's the goal. But Astralis, they're pretty frisky. And blame F. Look how aggressive he's being. Ooh, he's nug. It's a bit labored, but he gets there. <laughs> Gonna be attacked from bathrooms. Still manages to kind of like cut off a bit of a push. Oh, but he looked away. Hampus will fight over the flames. Device, that's the AK we're talking about. And Glaive turned his attention. He just got tapped by Rez. Tag, yeah. Perfect distraction and a perfect double. Ooh, between Device and Rez. Deagle comes in to lend a helping hand. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. We plant a bomb, we blow shit up, and maybe we take a second round. <laughs> Op's not even shooting at this point. <laughs> Glaive is literally not even taking any shots, uh, so... That might be, it just might be a liability because maybe you want to use it uh, in this game, but you also save so much money if you don't. And surely there's more opportunities to uh, be in the round if you're just rifling for Glaive, right? The solo AK round. It worked. It worked, yeah. When we believe in the double AK, that didn't work. But that's the prime example that I'm talking about. When you get your pistol on the exit of bathrooms, like, that's such a viable hit. You see how quickly, you know, I, I'm assuming Device has to get the kill towards the dumpster, but Rez goes from bathrooms to on-site in the matter of a second. And there it is. Ninjas, nicely done. Second round win. Kind of comes out of nowhere in a, in, a, in a great fashion, though. That's definitely going to, you know, kind of boost up the T side. And you can see Device literally trying to do the exact same thing. I can see Astralis playing hard to expect CS. The way that Blame F is, he's like lurking, but so aggressively, like mm -hmm. in your face, walking around the front of bathrooms like that. Sometimes in playground, sometimes on bathrooms, mm -hmm. sometimes inside of connector. I wonder if he's trying to find that round where NIP don't show up and then he uses it to flank B, but a lot of the rounds have ended A for and ninjas. For better or worse. Gotta be scared of these deagles. Yeah, we'll see if Astralis can do to ninjas what was done to them. There's no support off short here for config, so he's just gotta hope a time he can come here because that door could swing open. And it's about to, with a flash on top of it. Oh, but it's not going to stop config. <laughs> oh, my goodness. A kill and 30 damage versus Esetag. So he does his job. Serves as a landmine. Smoke blocks off the prying eyes of Device. And Lucky's going to stay committed to the wall. A lot of pressure on Lucky in this one. And he's been caught two times now down on this B site by somebody kind of coming in from short side. Mm. Can't afford to let that happen in a round like this once Config's kind of primed them. A boost up from Zipix won't spot a body on Short, but Lucky doesn't suspect that somebody can be pushed. He takes the info that Short is clear, and he lets his guard down on that CQC fight. Zipix instead gonna have to shut this down, and with smoke ahead of him, they will get dangerously closer. Device fires off into the player into heaven, and it's gonna need to be Blame or Zip. 2v4 up close. Bomb planted makes this one even harder, but Zipix will find early impact. Hampus over towards short. Blame F now, hands on a gun. 
Uh, but he's lost his teammate through the smoke. Good job by Hampus to find impact, and Rez will close this one out. Deny any type of... It's so interesting because you can know that there are multiple players back pit, but you can still safely plant the bomb, and there's yeah. this line drawn on the si sand type beat with uh, that interaction. You just ignore him. Yeah. The game gets a little bit closer. Like most problems. Mm-hmm. Always healthy. Just ignore it. Config, hard to ignore this. Bro. Again, he's good for a headshot and some follow-up damage. Glaive gets magnetized into the line of sight of Esetag. 13 and 6 for Config already in this half. Casually dropping 20 or something in the first of Nuke, if I remember. Yes. Did a hell of a job in his first official with Astralis. Oh. Blame F-U-S from that, from all the... <laughs> <laughs> Great gun. Can't believe it's free. Yeah, right? <laughs> they just got boxes of them. Look at this. <laughs> just the one tap. The laser. Did he, how many did he see there? Did he only see Blame? Well, it's led the, led the tease into the B-site. Yeah, and they're going to find this one for absolutely free. All right. This makes the game a lot more interesting. Some very unorthodox situations, but I think it's also a product of... The fact there's just so little tape to go off of. I have nothing against Astralis, but I hope this goes three maps because oh, if we had Mirage yes. in the veto, oh my God. but then don't get to see it. And you don't get it? That's just the What's worst that? feeling. What's that really? It's the worst feeling possible. Yeah, that would be a shame. So we are fingers crossed. For science. Yes. Sometimes we have to make sacrifices for science and Astralis. They just, they just have to accept that. Yes. Of course they won't. And I'm okay with that too. Gonna fight tooth and nail here to try and keep bodies inside of the bomb radius, but it's just gonna be Zipix to die. Goodbye. <laughs> nail to the wall, give it his best shot, try to get a dink off. Maybe they're playing close. Every situation. He knew he was gonna win four majors in 2016. The only problem is sometimes it takes him so long to dig through his encyclopedia of knowledge. Mm. That's the only reason he loses rounds. He needs MVME. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. He needs to upgrade. But uh, Astralis still in a solid state. Off on Glaive. Well done. I said, well done. Thank you. <laughs> Happy? Recognize I'm praising you. <laughs> this is my backpack. <laughs> Glaive's going to run away. And the ninja's going to follow up ever so closely. But not too fast, okay? You don't want to. You don't want to go sprinting into some kind of a trap. They will uh, cautiously play through the bathrooms and gather control. But as they take the top of bathrooms, it's actually Astralis to push through the bottom. Esetag, cautious of the possibility that somebody's behind them. And the A site setup will be tested again. <sighs> Tough spot for Blame F. He's got cover, of course, and Glaive lays down the law with the first stop shot. Rez going to throw the Molotov deep, but Blame puts a smoke even closer. And that's going to give him a little wiggle room. They push through, and oh. Blame's got the double. A shutdown offense that offers over Bomb, and a little bit of damage versus Blame thanks to the grenade. Wow, he knows his AK was sticking out a lot, but I don't think it was spotted because the op kill came in so early. Yep. So he could react off that flash. That's nice awareness from Glaive. He was being guaranteed that Glaive had his back. The trust of a teammate is a valuable thing. And I think this uh, idea to kind of starve out uh, NIP a lot more is working out. We do have Glaive playing kind of all the way back in this situation. Um, on, in the safest angle, it's the hardest to get timing. Like, it's actually impossible for him to get timing there because he's got uh, Blame F watching the outside of the divider. So there's no way that, you know, device walk up could happen again. So it's kind of a, a vanilla way to start the round. But oftentimes versus NIP, they will just eat time off the clock for you if you do give them space. I really think that's a viable strategy versus um, Nip's T sides. I think one thing they're good at is being thorough on T side and actually, you know, finding opening kills in as punishment, which is maybe why they were so good versus Astralis' aggressive options. Yeah. But they, they do have a problem with the clock. Well, it never stops ticking. Time starting to run out in this first half as well. We're in the back third. Astralis still leading by two. 
And with that setup in the last round, that convincing A hold, I'm starting to think to myself, like, they could pull ahead still on the defense. Yeah, I think that's also that's just a great adaptation that still hasn't bared all its fruit, right? Yep. So we, we can see if um, that'll continue to work. The top bathrooms play. To me, it's really just that, like, dominant... Dominance on the B site, that's anything. Blame F. Oh, that flash is tough. Yeah, perfect. Woo. Iced out, never had a chance, and never had a teammate either to help him with this one. He was very much a one-man army. Where was that? Oh, utility drop. Hap is going to be the grenade mule. He's locked in the corner of Long. And that could allow for the rest of the ninjas to play through bathrooms if they choose to. But you can see them very wary of a, you know, another setup like last round. Obviously, with a man advantage, they know that it's not going to be the blame F device show or glaive show. Config. Oh, he goes. Wow. Sees all the grenades obviously being yeah. thrown, and with Hampus having his hands busy, Config's going to chomp down on that chance. Lucky, blinded. Burns Plopsky. No eyes needed. Bomb dropped in the process. Essa wow. tag denied. And Zipix is keeping okay. this crisp. All right. A great hold on the A site. Config takes initiative. And then they anchor in. Man, Config is so good at finding those opportunities. Like, he recognized that so many players would wait. And then they'd be out of the timing and come in late. But he's got so much confidence, dude. Uh, also, Zipix was 3-3 three and three when this round started. So okay. he said, if you're not going to come B, I'm going to come to A. And lays down the 3K. But it just goes to show you how many times uh, ninjas have really tried to attack this A site. I'm curious where all those grenades were landing for, for Hampus as well. Damn config having to interrupt the executes. But oh, blame F. Keeping it tight. Insta frags device. Oh man, that opening kill. It's that's, so big. Yeah, it's so and big. And so confident. Because they know now they can move right into their super passive game plan. Like and he does that lurk. Goes yeah. back into connector. There's always that... Uh, Ooh. Oh, a little bit of a bait to try to draw Zipix's attention away. It seemed yeah. like he was still aware. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. One guy shoots through smoke while the other one inches into the site. But uh, the only problem for ninjas is obviously that leaves Hampus on 3 HP. So he'll grab a Galil. Sacrifices must be made for the greater good of the ninjas in pajamas. Rotation's kind of interesting because they're expecting clearly a re-aggression. But you can see the A site's been evacuated entirely. And Blame Meth is controlling the fast rotation downstairs, but he's only going to be in a retake spot for, you know, if the A-site a hit comes in. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. He's been very, wow, he's been very kind of, like, Ooh. liberal with the way that he lurks on this on the CT side. I kind of like, like seeing it, honestly. You don't see him take this many risks normally. But, of course, it's not always going to work. Still a bit of timing if they want to head back down to B. Three smokes if they want to throw a fake exec and double back. Because for the time being, we've got the majority of what's left of Astralis locking in A-Site. Lucky ahead of Glaive, off support, looking to be given. Grenades being thrown, but now with Glaive down, you'd think Lucky is doomed. Long peak, shut oh. down. He's got this corner position, and they're going to come at him. A second from Lucky. That's good enough. Good enough to put Config into a winnable spot, but he has to be quiet, and he has the op. Mm. So it's going to make for a really awkward retake, and he opts not to. Instead, conceding a fifth round win to the Ninjas, and I'm sure Blame F will be kicking himself that he came out of connector. It was 5v4 at that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got the kill, and like, I actually thought Blame was going to fall or all the way back. Oh, it was 4v4? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right, because they found one back. So, we don't know what, what actually, we don't know what Blame F's decision is going to be if they don't get the 4v4, because now the pressure is back on. So, a nice, a nice to actually didn't think it was in Ninjas to find a tactic like that, because how slowly they go sometimes, but... They find that kill to bring it back. They encourage Blame to try to make up for the fact that, you know, maybe they don't feel totally comfortable in the 4v4. And they punish him too. And that's how they secure a round. Well earned by NIP. Keep this one competitive. Feels more very much like there's a nice honeymoon effect going on for Astralis where everyone's feeling like, you know, very good overall. Most notably, of course, right now, we've got the Complexity Duo. Top fragging for Astralis, 14 on Config, 11 for Blame F. And it looks like Config's going to take place back towards A. Ooh, fast one, maybe. Device right through short side. We've got Glaive posted. Not able to get that op shot, and he falls away immediately. Three members of Astralis on the B site to start. Plopsky. Wounded. Glaive finds the wall bang damage. 
there's more to be had, but you got to be cautious. Taking a huge risk with these jump spots. Versus res, no less. Yeah. There's one guy who's going to clean your clock. <laughs> All right. I, do, I, I think some of these openings uh, have been opportunities passed with these uh, potential flanks. So Config will be the tip of the spear this time. Ooh, easy pickup. As they call him. Spearman. Yeah. Is that what they call him? Spearman? Spearman. With all the lead characters and everything. Mm, yes. Blame F looking to do the same thing and shave a player off of this attempt of the ninjas to get closer and closer to A. I like that Lucky's being proactive, but if they go too aggressive, then S attack's going to catch him. And Lucky being caught on B has been a problem. Got to minimize mistakes at the 35 second mark. Blame tries to commit outwards, sees that Rez is throwing utility, but they don't see any, you know, total confirmation. Config and Blame F shoulder to shoulder. That's a lot of firepower for Astralis on this A site and Ninjas now nowhere to be found. Essetag the front runner. It's a 2-2 split into the B site. Lucky deleted by Rez. And this op of Glaive gonna be a tough spot. Combat shot connects, but it's just damage, not kills. Look at the HP here for the Ninjas. Config quickly attacks from the back and that could draw more bodies into him. Maybe Device goes big as he has the full bar of health and a flash to his name. Two ops in the post plant, but an even 3v3. No utility to work with. No, it's just gonna have to be the guns. Blame F. Well, he's waiting for his chance to strike. Rez cuts one off. Essetag pops up, and it's going to need to be all config. He takes to the top of the bomb site, and the time's ticking pretty quick. Essetag hides in. Config does damage, but he needs another kill and the defuse. He's on for the ace, and he just can't win it. Despite his best efforts, the ninjas will secure themselves a six. Well, one hell of a try. Yeah, they, they, they get themselves a six. Another hard-fought hard round. It's very tricky all these little moves, but it's just enough, right? I feel like Lucky's making some, there's definitely some discomfort on both sides of the map right now. Lucky has been caught off guard on B a number of times. A whole Dave is spending more time on that side. It feels like Config is basically the best player on the map for Astralis by a big margin. Yeah. And he's trying to fill in the gaps on both sides of the map. Doing what he has to. When he needs to. Ninja's looking to steal away the lead and end this with a one round edge. Hampus sometimes, I love watching Hampus try to just find these timings on B-Site Overpass. There's so many iterations of teams he's been on where that's just his bread and butter. And I've heard players talk some smack about him. It just doesn't make sense. It's unpredictable and for that reason, ooh, it's worth your respect, but that's two kills up from Astralis. Considering they only have three rifles to work with, a perfect start to round 14. Yeah. This one should be a little bit much to come back from and now they're going to look at the money as well and it's it's crossed a minute if they get something for free i think they go for it if not i mean they might think about carrying this over into round 15. it's a pretty dire situation you know when you go to monster if you grouped up for it then you know there's always a chance you could still kind of win the rounds and Red's going to see some opportunities they'll push Oof, through okay all, all three t's go down so they're yeah, 19 had, right now. Yeah, he had actually had 18, so he's already crossed oh. what he had on Nuke in the well, first half. Look at him go. It's pretty impressive. It's important to be honest, Launders. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Flame F. Oh, yo, yo. Hey, hey. It's a nice one. Device with the one dig. Wow, not a single player on NIP is positive right now. And neither am I, because that was such a negative comment to make. <laughs> Config flashing for upper connector. Ooh, he actually dies to Plopsky here in the base of it, but at least Glaive can find an escape route. He'll double back all the way to the A site. Lucky looking to join Zipix on B. And a very critical 3v3 to close out number 15. The ninjas. Double Deagle exit from oh, okay. Monster. Very clean, you know, two, di Ooh, two Deags in the round. And Rez is gonna add another Plopsky. Two kills with the Galil. This first half ends as close as can. Took away the skins, took away the name. You could see that it's him, you know, the way that he, he plays the game. Such a unique style. It's really cool to watch when you can stand out like that uh, at this level and still have such an incredibly high impact. 19 kills, beating his uh, last uh, first half of the last map where he had 18 and really carrying Astralis through a very awkward first half on Overpass. Oh, speaking of awkward, weird movement there. Plowski sees a shadow, but then the jump doesn't come through the door. Yeah. Also doesn't land on the bench. I, I kind of feel like 
Uh, he he asked for an awkward fight though. You know okay, what I mean? that's fair. That's sh- fair. Yeah, the shadows could pass him by. Yeah. It's not a, not a bad spot. That it definitely can work, and you do get the shadows. But situations like that, I suppose. A little bit weird, man. Like Willy Wonka weird. Smokes over the top of the site. Device, tough spot, but no challenge from Long here. Very passive from Zipix, and that's why. Ooh. He waits just long enough for Device to give up his side. Said I played with you long enough, son. Yeah. <laughs> In your head. And now we've got a bomb plant comfortably for Astralis, so solid start to the pistol. No, this is bad, because this is taking us farther away from Mirage. Oh, you're right. This is awful. We hate this. I'm angry. <laughs> and I don't really know why. Yeah. As long as the, the game's exciting. So, what do we... Oof. Okay, well, Come on. is the retake possible? 4v2? Yes, yes FS, it is. Rez, they're coming in hot. Rez alone, 1v3, a little bit far. Yeah, that would have been his chance at the 1v2. Then maybe he beats Zipex. Don't know if NIP can survive the second pistol win. We'll see about the T side. Yes, we will. That's where Astralis made their money, honestly. Yeah. Both both halves, but now they don't have to worry about that off as much. Astralis odds to the favor still, even before we head to the unknown of Mirage. Easy B pickup from Blame. Lucky. Oof. Gonna get tested, but survives the first fight and config hen helps out with the second. There's a player still in sight with Essatag, but a jumping Blame F Mac 10 to the forehead is enough to kill any man. What they're gonna be able to threaten, I feel like based on what we've seen so far, with the very few rounds of data that we have on this team, is an incredibly explosive T half and also on yeah, overpass, true, true, true. you know, monster hits, right? Yep. The, the, no matter how bad you are as a roster, if you have drilled one monster hit, you can use that more times than you're supposed to be able to, you know, based on like the map's design, just because it's, you can get, as long as you can clear out that close right angle, get your back against the wall, getting out of monster outside the pillar, it's, it's really hard to stop. I mean, no matter how good you are. And 2021 CT side CS, it has a lot to do with doubling up towards the the uh, wood wall as well as the right side of monster and so much emphasis on that and that's pretty much where the rounds begin and end sometimes with these b site hits because there's no ceilings over yep. the whole site so if short control gets taken or you just want to throw nades from outside monster you can flash any point on the site molly any point on the site or nade any point on the site it's Think about how easy the T executes on Nuke were, and there are basically, you know, designated glass windows that you have that problems. And I, I think we've seen, oftentimes, the, the game plan starts out with the op towards A, and then starts to lean towards B towards the end, depending on how the half goes. Okay. Um, but we'll have to see what Glaive has in store for us. I, for one, can't wait. But we'll have to. Passively, Astralis going to clear out Connector first. And, and you know, listen, Ninjas, you got a P250 between the five of you. Two flashbangs with Essatag. Maybe you get a lucky timing on a pop. Or maybe it's going to come down to the plop. My nose left a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it. Poopski. Hey, man. It's just funny to say. Don't talk smack. No, it didn't. You literally said plop. That's <laughs> no, I'm laughing. Okay. Flash into short, catch Zipix, take the AK, and that's a you know that's the silver lining ninjas could really hope for. Anything beyond that is more than they kind of deserve. Blame F. Damn, poor Esetag. Didn't realize he'd be that deep. You're supposed to. You're supposed to be allowed to walk through your spawn backwards. You're supposed to be. Yeah. But uh, in Blame F's house, <laughs> well, his rules. A jumping lucky will distract long enough for config to clear the last two kills. Astralis leading 11 7 on this T side. Optic. <laughs> okay. That's their export? Yeah. Okay. How much do they charge? Too much. Free 99. Too much, man. I'm telling you. This food inflation. Mm. Smokes over the top of the B site. It's going to be a quick one. It's going to be lickety split and a literal split if Lucky can come in from short. But for the time being, he staves off his commitment. Zipix going to flash his way beyond the barrels. Plopsky blind as a bat, sitting down inside of the water, regaining some vision. But oh, there's a player right to his left. It's Hampus instead with the kill. And then Plopsky able to answer with one as well. Trying to find a multi frag. It's Hampus with a gun that goes dry and blame F with an answer. Deals with the device up in the heavens, and he's looking for more. He needs more because Lucky is so tagged up and also playing with just the MAC-10. But Rez comes in from the upper shelf and pushes Lucky to the 1v3 Deagle MAC-10 only. 
Good damage, but now they know where he's at, and it's going to be a big ask, mm. too much in course. And Ninjas with their eighth. Better coverage than Verizon on that hold. That was not bad. The, uh... <laughs> they, they, had, they had one rifler towards Monster. So this is where things got sketchy, right? Because this tech does get one. But it, I brought up that, you know, the stat about the fact that no one on NIP is positive, And that's still true, even to right now. Res being 12 and 12 as the closest. But they've been able to scrape together a lot of rounds because I feel like they've been the better team in a lot of situations. All right, we'll see if we can scrape together consecutive round wins on this defensive half. A CT round win looks good on Ninjas. Let's see if they can get some more. It was a hell of a dry spell on Nuke, but this is their map pick, and this is oh. Config's game. What? Already, he peeked into short There's B. There's no one else in B. It's completely clear. Holy if they go B, it's everything for them, but instead it's oh. Rez and Plopski aggressive into the playground, and now Astralis, they are in a desperate spot. Lucky solo down connector. Oh, what a weird position. Ninja's four-player aggressive setup on A. Oh, man. The one threat is maybe they lose B, and it, it could have happened had the bomb not been committed onto playground. How the hell do they dig themselves out of this ditch? Lucky? Mm, nope. Going to get shut down by Hampus. Zipix pushing through the smoke. And it's a sweep from the ninjas in pajamas. Config going to catch Rez. But he has so little health that sure enough, a USP spam through smoke was... It was Cloud9 with Esatag and um, Alex who called that on like a match point round. They did a four aggressive setup on CT side uh, overpass. Oh. And then the team just went B. But in this situation, that's they the good didn't. version. Yeah. yeah. Nice to have. It was very fun to watch you facially work through that situation. That was hard. That was yeah. very hard. Guys, from home, it looked great. I believe you. I believe you, for better or for worse. And Astralis currently looking worse than the ninjas in pajamas. 4v3 weapon advantage, but uh, you know who scares me? It's Config. He's losing his teammates and most of his HP. He will be toppled by device from the USP, doubling back, hunting Glaive, the bomb carrier on 30 HP. This game looking as tight as ever, mm -hmm. but the ninjas still trail, even after this one by one. Looks like Mirage is coming. It's coming. Well, <clears throat> settle down. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was a brutal right. round. Really, he's at all-time highs. Yes. We'll see what we can do here from round 22. They'll try to chew through another attack from Astralis, and I think this is where Astralis will, you know, determine their mood for the, the next couple of rounds. If they get smoked here or not. Molly's over the top. Ooh, device sticks around and catches Glaive over top of the mid peak. Just feels like we're going to have to keep falling with eyes on Config to see whether he can be the jackknife elsewhere when things go poorly. You know, think about how mobile he was in the first half, playing all the different positions, being thrown around the map in an attempt to do what he does. Much harder on the offensive half, and we can see it. Can tell us just about to go for this exec again, but how many nades will be involved? Config walking all the way out. Esatag ready for him, playing around the pillar. Config eats the flashbang. Esatag sees nothing, comes back, and is killed. Plopski locked into short side. Lucky goes beyond, and because of that, he's going to find his headshot versus Hampus. Device with the op oh, is cleared oh, okay, out. Right. Config, 12 health, but a critical kill. Plopski all the while still on short, and so is Rez. They're smoked, and they're boosting, There's and they're going to be avoided. There's a potential late flank for the CTs as well. They're making noise. Well, if they do, actually. If they just go away, they've got this locked in. Oh, this is just, will they live is the question. Red's coming to clear the tunnel. Blame that tight angle. Ooh, it's just good enough to give him the cover. And Plopski still doesn't know exactly what's up, but and now the bomb plant confirms it. Astralis, man. good read on the situation. Config, 29 kills off these two entries, and just as you pointed out, went down to 12 HP off the first duel, Blast and he wasn't away even device. looking at his target. He, there's so, he's got that Yakinder effect, and I hate to compare Yakinder to him because Config's been doing it for a lot longer, of course, but no, the confidence that Yakinder's had this year in particular and how you know, amazing he's been as an entry, it's this idea that you, know, you can send him out into battle with all the flashes on the world coming at him, Molotov's at his feet and his teammate dying around yep. him, and he'll still manage to yep. see through the interference and find the frag consistently, and right now he is that X Factor. Hands down, man. If the Danes are Vikings, then Config's the Berserker. You throw him through the thick of it, he's going to inspire the people around him. He'll be up in this defense. Yeah. 
The Vice and Hampus swinging the big greens. And none of them on the side of Astralis. So let's see what's up as Device looks to post towards Fountain yet again. Squeaky door blown off its hinges. Zipix the solo outside monster and some jump spotting going on. Config looking for the headshot maybe. Device looking for the peak on the top of the stairs, oh. but that's lucky to step up. And here's the thing, you know, we were criticizing the B play. Lucky looked very uncomfortable, and he gave up some critical kills. But now this is two rounds in a row that alongside Config, he's been crisp. Down towards B last round, definitely helped. I don't think Config gets all three of those kills on such little HP. That's true. And if Lucky wants to come alive here and now in the later portion of this second map, no better time for him to show his value. Oh, so close. By a hair. Almost with the timing. No, but you're right. You don't have to do everything to do a lot. And that's what Lucky's shown. Man. Love the fact that they don't shy away from this op. As a tag. Oh, he might run back into the problem. Oh, doesn't win his duel versus Config. I appreciate the idea in the 4v4. Config did look like he was about to give up stairs totally. They were going to move into the next phase of their game plan. But instead, sold his own little fake with a spam at the top of stairs. It came right back down for the duel. And it's versus Aphomis, of course. Just to shine a light on the CT side of Economy, and even without device, Hampus puts together a frag. 4v3 as they splint closer in. Oh, it's open. Oh my, it's so open. Completely theirs for the taking. A1S damage good. Config down for the count. Plopski's gonna be given another fight. Oh, this is so dry. The duels are so dry. No smoke in heaven, no flashes here, and they're crossing the right side of the pillar. Oh, two players down beneath heaven. Opera gonna play towards Graffiti instead. It's Rez as the front runner. Zipix looking to keep it locked. Blame F down in the cubby. And Lucky further back. Drawing the attention of the CT retake attempt. First one cut down. Hampus scoped in. Oh. Causing Blame F to get an easy pickup. And to leave Plopski left on his own. It is a 13th for Astralis. At a T side that is starting to break through. Ninjas absolutely lean on this map in their pool. And this would be a pretty crazy upset. Honestly, just in this map. For basically a brand new team to be able to take one over them. 13-10 here for Astralis. T side. I'd and now they have nothing besides this M4 on Plopski. No armor purchases oh, as they think about playing from 1410. Yeah, they held on for as long as they could, but these last two rounds, both of which have Lucky's name on it, but oh, the Deagle. Rez looking for a second, and to take down Config, that could change everything. Oh, because we know that Astralis have leaned on him to get through this opening matchup. Dodging the flashbang, Rez looking oh. for it, but again, it is lucky to pick something up. And it's not the most critical of cr kills. It's not Plopski's M4 taken away, but Glaive still within connector finds another kill. And so will wow. Blame F. This front line from the A play. Man, they've got so many operations going on at the same time. So many different fights, so many positions, engagements, and options. And more importantly than anything, Mohan, it's kills. They are cutting away the pistols of the ninjas in pajamas. Oh, ninjas, of course, didn't have much to work with. Don't want to overly emphasize that. It's a 4A setup once again. Bombs left back a little bit this time, which is actually a really important difference, even if they died. As the tag alone on the B site. They seem a bit more cautious about the idea that this is one of their opening plays really don't see ninjas doing this too often this molly for the opera yep. hits the mark flushes res forward ever so slightly smoke's gonna confirm it but there's that potential long peak yep nicely done plopsky times it and he gets a second but they this is this is the drawback. They get the info again, but they left the bomb back. It can't be spotted oh, no. by the CT side, but now it can be cut off. Hampus coming in fast on the flank. He gets oh. shut down by Config. The awareness kicks in. The timing is there. And now the bomb is recollected with an open route to swing around as Config holds on to short side for Zipix to come in and plant. It's a dangerous recovery, but Config making it look easier and easier. They take away the man advantage and they get the bomb into position fast enough. Device smoked out just as he gets into heaven. 
and a daunting two versus three, or it's 15 for Astralis. And ninjas don't look like they're just going to walk away for the save. Another smoke towards heaven, but that's not the problem. It's the two CTs peeking in from Graffiti. Lucky gets dinked. That could be the opening, but he comes oh. right back at the fight, and he deals with Plopsky. It's all on device, okay. and Lucky is finding some life. Yes, yeah, sometimes he is a fourth quarter player. He really does have it in him, and he's starting to wake up like crazy, man. C'est la vie. Yeah. Well, they'll get a new a new chance to uh, try something. And this is a, a round where they're on five rifles. Last round, they basically tried the 4A setup. Probably wasn't a great idea. The execution maybe wasn't uh, as pristine as they needed it to be. And it ended up uh, costing them the round. So at least have another chance to try something a little different. And they immediately go for the B defense. Total contrast and an opening kill. Rez is going to have an opera breathing down his neck, but he turns attention just in time, and Glaive, whoa, still able to get the shot. Oof. Takes a bit of damage in the process. Look at the rotations on the CT side. So panicked already. Yeah, they're swinging. scrambled. You leave someone top bathrooms, they have shadow advantage on both sides, mm -hmm. on short side and long side, so it's not, it's absolutely normal to leave someone there alone, but you also expect them to be able to delay somewhat, win a duel. So now on the 4v4, it's a lot testier. Ampus will pay a small price for that chance at a span through smoke. And the bomb starts to make its way over towards B. I think that's the pragmatic style of Glaive saying, like, we're going to work hard to make it seem like we're not going to do this. Ooh. Oh, but then we're going to come back to it and blame F. Is that boulder you're talking about moving yes, slowly is. and rolling through the bathrooms? That's what he does. Tough piece to stop and S to tag. Catching Glaive outside of Monster. Blame, now. blame is actually walking yep. fast on its lurk. Yep. 20, 25 seconds, so they need to combine. He actually has to move at an appropriate tempo. They're going to come back up the stairs. He has the sight. They don't have anybody in stairs to stop him. And Blame F may have just won this round. More and more momentum being gained by Blame. Plopsky's going to rotate up, but you can see him already walking, so he has to be cautious with this. If he clears Blame, Blame's on low HP, but Plopsky's caught right on the side of the staircase, and Astralis with the late B to A rotation, a 4v5. Made possible by the fact that Blame F picks up a crucial kill versus device in bathrooms and then uses all of that as space towards A. And it's that, that's his brand. That's wow. his namesake right there to come through with the lurk. And yes, you can Slow tell rolling boulder. his style has changed already within this roster, in this new roster, but he still keeps some of his old identity. And the fact that he can use both makes him scarier than ever. Of course, a top six player coming out of 2020 uh, looking to put his mark on 2021. Yeah. There were no questions about his stats. It was and mostly about how, di how dynamic his play style could be. Yeah. Looking to, you know, get back to that point and erase some of the, the, the skepticism that is around him since... Even though they were all on M4s in that previous. But this could be at round 26. Let's Two MP9s here for ninjas. A FAMAS. Your first sign of poverty. Not a great position to be in. But crazier rounds have been won. And crazier comebacks have been mounted. No doubt. Device gives up the angle just before Config walks around from Connector. That could have definitely been an opening pick. But it slips through and slips by. As will Config, pushing past the bathrooms, and he dies to Device. Another five versus four from the ninjas in pajamas. This time, they have to lock it in. Look, they're doing it again. They yep. have to. They're trying to alert and alarm the A-site players. And even if you die, you still get those rotations. Three now move over towards Ooh. Monster. Smart move by NIP. Yep. This is a read on Glaive. Yep. And if this smoke fades, Zipix on full display. Molly's over the top, but they're going to stay hugged along the wall, so they're safe from damage for the most part. Plopsky has to move somewhat. Three, three on the right side. All three. Oh my god, this is really dangerous. If, if Glaive yeah, comes around. Come on this side, there's no one on the in the wood wall. He's got the first one. Oh no! Oh, he drops the shot. This is going to put a lot of pressure onto the others. And it's going to be Zipix instead. Two kills, but a third one locked in. And they turn their back to them. Rez with the double. And, and five for ninjas. And they're going to need four more. Flames extinguished and quick playground control. Device going to be the front runner of the bathroom's hold. Hampus nearby, but also kind of preoccupied, especially with that door open and no short control. You could see Plopsky kind of toying with the idea of combining here with Hampus. 
But where's the contact going to be found? Device falls back. Can't find an angle onto the ramp. But somebody could still walk right in. And sure enough, it's lucky. Hamp is now coming in from connector. Easy tap into Blame F and a 5 versus 3 for the ninjas. A 15-12 looking solid enough. But Hampus is still kind of stuck here. Very much left on his own. Shots coming zinging by, but he continues to fight. And that's going to call Rez into the action, which is exactly what Glaive would hope for. If they can get Hampus to come out of this cave. Man, they're so scared of this backstairs potential presence, even though there's no one here for Hampus, but... It's a two on four at the end of the day. Oh. However, two on three as Hampus really does get worried. They have short control here. And instead of clearing the bottom of the stairs, they go back and take that risk. Piece by piece. Now it's Config looking to lock in Essa Tag. He's on his own in a one versus three with no bomb control. He knows that Device is on left oh. and Device is also on for Astralis. But you can't count out the two guys with the Kevlar are the heaviest fraggers. And it's the complexity duo of Config and Blame F. Maybe something explosive. Definitely looking like a pack mentality for Strong from Astralis heading towards Monster. And then they somewhat split with Config testing the waters of Short. But he doesn't actually commit to that side, so this could just be the all-in. And there it is, the oh, flashback is good that. to blind. Oh, and it's a Fomus from Plopsky. Still good for the first two. And that's the tag going to lay down lead. But he ends up dead alongside Hapis. Glaive. A 1v3 turned 1v2 with bombs still ahead, but only 12 health, and sure enough, okay. res commitment. A killer commitment. And a very crucial round. 29, alive and kicking. Glaive gonna make sure nobody's coming at him long A fast, but Glaive is also taking on the responsibility of being alone towards A. Astral is showing an affinity for this B site in these most recent rounds. And if they get overfaced, yeah, there's a peak down monster. Dangerous game for Esetag to play. He loses 50 points of health, as will Glaive. Plopsky's able to pick one up, but he does lose his teammate next to monster. This doesn't need to be any kind of crazy commitment. There is still plenty of time for Astralis to piece it together. It's hard to say who comes out ahead in this situation because now we've just entered the mid-round. Options are still open past a minute. Dangerous. Making a move. Oh, but he gets his kill. It's going to be hard for him to fall back. He might play this aggressively. Yes, he That's will. That's a great move. Oh, Ampus, you love that confidence in round 29. He doesn't need a babysitter. Extends in on his own and looks to go one better, but that's where Zip's gonna stop this. A 1v4 attempt and everything's still left to do. You look at how much, or rather how little, map control Astralis had when they walked away from that B-Site 4v4. Hampus finds timing with the second kill player with grenades in his hands. It looked like they wanted to extinguish the fire so that they could push through and try to chase him. Little did they realize he stuck around. But Hampus, well, he still has a chance, albeit slim. If he gets this short kill versus Plopsky, he can make a sprint for the B bomb site, but he needs to clear it here and now. And as he walks out, he'll be cut down by Plopsky. Round 30 coming up next. Yes, tussling with that idea in his head that if he runs away mm -hmm. he could just die and that would be playing to lose instead he just decided this is a good play even if it's risky and he comes forward as they expect him to be afraid astralis gloves off you got nothing to lose here overtime or a victory off tech nines blame f with the galil oh interesting only slightly different, gonna smoke the stairs and potentially move into an exec. Yes, sir. They've got two players over towards the monster. This is it. This is the one that matters. Ninjas in pajamas. It's oh. a solid hold from Plopsky. Another 3K coming in from the ninjas. He's on for the ace and Lucky shuts it down, but he then f Have any crazy rounds from them. But how, obviously this is Counter-Strike. You can't expect that to happen. You can't lean on that the whole time. Nope. But we're also at the point where you can shake it off. You've got money again, it's a reset mentally, and you've learned a lot just from this match alone. And that goes for both teams. This is data for ninjas as well. This will come down to who's more adaptable now that they've all seen the full breadth of the rounds in both halves of regulation. Looking for some long contact. Rez hides behind Oak. Oh, lucky. We just said how he'd kind of gone silent, and now it's up to Device to maybe give us a multi-kill. Oh, barely misses that one as he peeks around the pluming smoke, but he'll be chased by Lucky. And inside bathrooms, Lucky gets himself a second kill. This could be the one that gets Astralis back to winning ways on this T side, but we do have that fast rotate. Ninjas. Oh, they thought they were comfortably pushing up on A. Config committed into the corner, catching Hampus by surprise. 
downloaded him instantly. Oh, wait, what's <gasps> nice happening flash. right here? Flash out of oh. keys. Everyone's confused out the side of his uh, out the side of his view model, and config dies. And now the CTs are still two. They're rotating from so far away, though. Plotsky this, does have vision. This bomb is way far back, however. Oh, Late smokes will come in. It looks like Lucky was just setting them up. Blame just got by. Oh my god. But gosh. so did Plopsky. Yeah, there they're... are two layers. Oh, both CTs. Both CTs, but one gets caught by Blame. They still don't know about Plopsky, but they figure it out. They figure everything out. One round. Whether it's six. device locked inside. Same. They were just in revolving doors, trying to catch one another. And now, three rounds to go for Astralis to take it to 19. But I don't think that's just a foregone conclusion. We've seen good stuff from Nip, starting with Device. Yes, sir. Starting to get a little more fired up. Getting into the party and Rez as well, down towards Connector. Now, we saw some good rounds from Hapis in there. And a 5v3 immediately for Ninjas in Pajamas. This could bode very well. Who's looking to claw it back? Who's up to the challenge? Who's up to the task? Rez concedes connector. All about timings now. Ninjas, you know, incentivized to stay alive, but... And also stay on site. Don't simply want to recede, yes. Still so much time here as Astralis work. And they've got a fair bit of utility left over as well. Nade could be good, but Hampus, he's ahead of it. Oh, oh Blame F gets barrel. the barrel. Still one close. Lucky doubles back just to connector. Blame F incredibly low, so it's going to need to be Lucky and Zipix who really take up the helm on this one. And Blame F's making a good bit of sound that activates Hampus, oh. but Lucky shuts him down. And Lucky in overtime is right back to the impact he had in that streak of rounds in the middle. He's still testing this. They swing right back around like a pendulum. Crazy that they stay because they made so much sound to fake out the rotate. Rez over towards Graffiti. There's another player here on barrels. Maybe it's going to be Plopsky to lock it down. He'll shut off Lucky and remember, blame 10 points of health. Oh. But another couple of kills and it's all on Rez. He's yeah. trying to play around it. Oh, and Zipex stops him right there. And when it matters most, what happened? head off. So many opportunities to stop them. Any of those kills go south, and that's a CT round all the way through. Instead, Astralis have won two in a row here in overtime after losing five straight in regulation. And definitely their weaker side. And they're gunning for the OT. Flawless streak. Because of the presence, it's... Oh! Nice, Plopsky. Very clean. Looked like he was going to get caught, but he was so aware of it. However, Glaive right in and trades it back. Rez looked like he wanted to jump upwards, but Lucky's going to know he's locked oh in, God. and Zipix just pushes right through smoke. And now the rotators are getting stuffed out. There's still one in B. Hampus, off angle, back of the site. What can so he do? So blind. So blind, but also unspotted until Blaine comes over the crest. And now a 2v4 is what they're left with. A late rotation as well from Device. He's just looking for some kind of a deep angle with this op, but Astralis look to minimize mistakes. And they're not trying to give up any easy kills. Smoke ahead of Device, and Rez now killed. This is a desperate spot oh. and a flawless T-side in overtime from Astralis. That's a little bit of magic to be able to pull my teammates. What Astralis just pulled off is uh, insane, but when you look at the players, you're like, I, I get it. Again, CT side was a little bit friendlier to them. Going to be a quick one here from the Ninjas, taking over short control immediately out of the round. I believe that's Config down inside Connector. Yeah, sure enough. Him versus Plopsky in a 1v1. Rez has cover over, so Config, he has to stay tucked in, and that's just going to welcome Plopsky into the fight. A 5v4 for Astralis and a fallback from Config. It costs him a little bit more HP, but Hampus is also lurking around here. And if Glaive gives false confidence to Config, that could be one thing, but Config doubles all the way back, so Glaive kind of left on his island yeah, alone. This was the big thing, and we saw the late monster walkouts in these situations to try to get something back from NIP. It doesn't feel like they have that option anymore. Hampus was on the other side of the map, and he was the tip of the spear in that regard. And you could see Astralis, you know, they, they like to starve Nip out when possible. And now it looks like Nip might give them that opportunity. So many players here ready for a B-side hit. That there is. But there's always this omnipresent question mark above the head of Lucky. And as he drops to 49, he's going to have to be as sharp as ever, tucked alongside this wall. Hampus sizing up this A site, trying to keep some kind of a commitment in position. Astralis toying with the peak. That's now 
three of their players at less than half HP, and Zipix just good for the one. Lucky Blind is a bat. Oh. S attack doubles up, but it's config, and we know Berserk Mode is prime and ready for the taking. Rez denies the chance. Man advantage back for Ninjas. 15 seconds on this clock, and Glaive is coming down alongside Blame. The possibility of a boost over top or not. But the smoke inside of the site gives them a path to walk this back around from Monster into Short to try and join Hampus. Side by side, they could play, but instead they remain outside of Monster. Glaive's gonna look to lock them in the angle. Oh, they nearly line up and Blame F trades for the first, but Hampus has the headshot. Three different rosters so far. Two ops in play here. Glaive, we saw, took a very passive line at long on that last round. But overall, it hasn't been a very fruitful endeavor and investment for Astralis. But again, things can change. And there's another 5v4. Oh my god. Ninja's not making this easy in the slightest. A little variation with Lucky committed behind Pillar, but fire at his feet forces him back onto barrels. Oh, and now they're actually primed to stop the stairs rotation on top of having three inside the B site. Does Plopsky know that his opponents are near? And at this point, singular config left to lurk on A alone as Glaive doubles back. He's resmoking. Uh, yes, he is. The back a monster for them to bleed some more time off this clock, and they'll take a you know a, a, a passive but proactive tech yep. tactic inside the site. Really sick utility usage, making the most of the change, allowing for the three players oh. from Astralis to just keep guns up inside of B. Honestly, I mean this the setup where they're sitting. I think they allow themselves to get entry inside the B again. No one on the half wall. No one on the other side of Monster, but they just have the player advantage, which might make the difference. I think I feel like they know it's going to be B. They have to be ready. They know that this battle is coming, and that it could be the final one in this BO3. Zipix, good for one, and Lucky as well. Rez has some kind of an answer as he looks to come in from short. Lucky's got the cover of the barrels, and who is this to join him? Device on the cusp of it. In with the headshot versus Lucky. Glaive is down in water. 11 seconds left. Config looking to attack from short. 